seems like every time the employment minister finds rock bottom, it keeps getting worse. First, he said he wasn't the Randy involved in his company, but we know there was only one Randy at his company. He said he wasn't involved with his company while in cabinet, and text messages reveal that he is. He said that he was indigenous to profit from government contracts stealing from First Nations communities. And now there's new news of coordinating business activities with drug smugglers and convicts. This is the behavior of a low-life fraud, not a federal cabinet minister. Simple question. How does that guy still have his job? Order. Order. The Honorable Minister for Employment and Workforce Development. Mr. Speaker, despite the innuendo, here are the facts. I don't know the person in question. I never met that person in question. And Mr. Speaker, those are simply the facts. The article even says that I've never met the person in question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Member from Thornhill. Here are the facts. He flaunts the ethics rules. He claims a false identity. He gets caught in a web of lies. That's what the Prime Minister rewards after nine years. With each passing day, we find out more about the Employment Minister's scams and schemes, and we learn that he's just a phony and a fraud. Canadians want to know. Indigenous communities who stole from him, who he stole from, want to know. And Liberal backbenchers want to know when the Prime Minister is going to fire that Cabinet Minister. This is on fire today. The Honourable Minister for Work, sorry, Employment and Workforce Development. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I don't know the person in the article from today. I've never met the person in the article from today. Those are the facts. Mr. Speaker, the Conservatives may not like it, but it's actually in the article that I don't know the person in question. Never met them. The Honourable Member from Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Islands and Rideau Lakes. The Liberal Minister from Alberta is a fake and a fraud. He said he was not the Randy involved in his company, but we know that there's only one Randy. He said he wasn't involved in his company at the Cabinet table. I'm going to ask colleagues. Today we've been uh, skating close to uh, the line in terms. Of... Excuse me, colleagues. Craig, just shut up, man. I will start my comment again if you would give me the privilege of listening. Nobody wants to listen. Several to you. occasions today we've been skating close to the line in terms of what's acceptable language. The Honourable Member from Leeds Grenville, I think, has skated over that line in accusing a direct member. Can I ask the Honourable Member to withdraw that comment and start his question from the top, please? We start, Speaker, that this Liberal Minister from Alberta has been implicated in fraud in media reports. Today, we've seen that. It's very clear. I'm just going to... I'm not certain if... I was having trouble hearing the member. I don't think I heard the withdrawal. If he could withdraw and start again, I would I'd appreciate it. I just, if members were not to take the floor while a member is being recognized, the speaker will be able to hear the member. The Honourable Member from Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Islands and Rideau Lakes. Withdrawing the previous words, Speaker, we'll talk about this Liberal Minister from Alberta who has been implicated in media reports in fraud. Some of them he's even apologized for. He, he misrepresented his identity, claiming to be Indigenous, trying to steal contracts from, Canadian, from people who are, in fact, Indigenous. This same minister said that he wasn't the Randy at his own company. We know that there was only one Randy at that company. Company. It's pandemic profiteering. We know that there's allegations of fraud. Why is it that this Prime Minister just won't fire that minister? The, honor, the Honourable Member, the Honourable Minister for, for Employment and Workforce Development. Mr. Speaker, what the member opposite just said is simply not true. The Honourable, Minister, the Honourable Member from Leeds, Grenville, Thousand Islands and Rideau Lakes. 
it's unbelievable that with the cocaine connections to the liberal minister from Alberta, that those liberals, that prime minister, want to allow him to continue to be in cabinet. He said that he was indigenous to try and steal contracts from individuals who are indigenous. That's okay as long as you are a liberal. The company is involved in more than half a dozen lawsuits because of fraud, and that's okay as long as you're a liberal. They came before committee and said things that we now know weren't true, like it must have been some other Randy. If he won't resign, why won't this prime minister fire that fraudster? <laughs> <laughs> Again, members uh, at the very last possible moment used uh, a word which would not be considered, would not be considered acceptable. Can I just ask the honourable member from Leeds Grenville, Thousand Island, Stop that we to withdraw. withdraw that last word? I withdraw the last word. He should be fired. I thank the honourable member, the honourable minister for work, uh, employment and workforce development. Mr. Speaker, what the member opposite said once again is not true. The honourable member for Megantic-Lerable, Mr. Speaker, the minister of official languages campaigned as a successful entrepreneur, uh, but he's an imposter. We know that he presented him. He said he wasn't involved in his company when he was a minister, but the text messages show the opposite. He was taking money destined for First Nations communities. He said he was a journalist, journalist even though he was a lobbyist. When will the prime minister fire this professional fake? That I have been this. The Honourable Minister of Employment and Workforce Development. Mr. Speaker, despite the insinuations, I have never met that person in question in today's article. I have never dealt with her. I have never met her. Those are the facts. <laughs> the Honourable Member from megantic Lerable. Mr. Speaker, there are so many Randys that they didn't even under understand the question I asked him. But the Minister of, of, of Official Languages presented himself as a successful entrepreneur and journalist. But he said he worked for Radio Canada and Les Affaires. And even the editor in chief of Les Affaires said, I was, it was obvious he wasn't a journalist. He was uh, uncovered, even though the Prime Minister made many efforts to protect him. When will the Prime Minister fire his fake minister? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker. The statements of that member are false. No liberals clapping for him. Even liberals don't believe him. Order, please. Order, please. Order, please. The Honourable Member for Lac Saint Jean. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister is unable to acknowledge that he is responsible for the crises caused by the rapid increase in immigration. Even in his mea culpa yesterday, he was still looking for someone to blame. It's the pandemic's fault. It's the fault of businesses or schools. Yet he's the one who issued every permit. He's the one who took over McKinsey's immigration targets despite our warnings. He's the one who raised the targets to 500,000 people a year despite warnings from his own civil service. When will he finally admit that he's the one who's responsible? The Honourable Minister of Immigration. Mr. Speaker, I think the member has spent a little too much time in Ottawa to say that the federal government controls absolutely everything, he, but he knows in full well that the government of Quebec also controls things. Uh, we do have our side of the responsibility. The, the Honourable Member for Lac Saint-Jean. It's not as if anyone had told him to be careful with the immigration targets. His own officials warned him back in 2022 that his immigration thresholds would exacerbate the crises in housing and access to public services. The bloc has been warning him for years that taking on the Century Initiative's immigration targets would be totally irresponsible. Quebec has been warning him for two years that our welcoming capacity has been exceeded. Does the Prime Minister realize now that we wouldn't be facing the current crisis if he had listened and thought things through instead of insulting everyone. Oh.